The, uh, the neo-atheists, uh, Richard Dawkins, uh, would say that you're not religious, Stephen. You're, you've got no God. Well, they don't clearly... Prob See, some of these neo-atheists don't seem to have a religious bone in their bodies, and yet they discourse as though they knew all about it. There's something curiously sterile in many of the... Um, not so much in the arguments, which I think are very often the destruction of straw men, Bertrand Russell did just the same 70 years ago, and now this is being recycled. But they seem to somehow be devoid of a sensibility, which is very difficult to define. Um, it's clearly absurd to say that if you don't believe in God, you're not religious. Buddhists have not believed in God for 2,500 years, but I think it's very difficult to coherently argue that Buddhism is not a religious tradition. Uh, Dawkins, by the way, conveniently just puts Buddhism to one side. Yes, yes, yes. He says, well, Buddhism is an ethical system, we don't have to deal with it. That's right. Which is, um, I think, a bit of a cop-out. You know, it doesn't, it, he's not facing up to religiosity, to religion, in its full breadth. He's taking some fairly soft targets yeah, yeah. and blasting them with a big gun, yeah. but not achieving much, frankly. Yeah. Richard Dawkins is a very good example of what I was saying at the beginning, that a scientist, as a scientist, is, should be value-free. He's a very good scientist, as a scientist, but he's popular for, for what he talks about, which is not science, in which he actually also shows a good deal of ignorance, yeah. Yeah. because yeah. he has never taken the trouble to study what he's talking what about, about yes. whereas when he studies science he has taken the trouble and he's a good scientist. So why, they're making megabucks these people, why is there a big thirst out there for this great neo-atheist publishing wave that's going on? Oh, there are a variety of reasons for that I think. Uh, and one is simply the fact that we've We've moved into an, a, an, such a, a, a different world, and the Christian tradition, like some other traditions too, I suppose, that is, is running a couple of hundred years behind, if not more, trying to catch up, as it were. And, and in this, uh, it, it's a very messy and, and, uh, situation, and I think some people out there are rather glad to see traditional religion sort of criticised and put in its place, again without realising the tremendous benefits we've all received from it. The chief one being the modern world, yeah. because the modern world came out of the Christian West. And uh, until we recognise that, uh, we shall perhaps be too easily critical of the Christian tradition of the past. Stephen, is it possible then that the, the Buddhism without beliefs, of uh, which you speak and write, may backfill some of the spiritual vacuum that is emerging as Christianity recedes? Possibly. And I, well, I think there is evidence, at least on a small scale, that it, that, that is what is happening. I mean, Buddhist, when, when I went when I first started Bud studying Buddhism in the early 1970s, um, it was impossible to do it in Europe or America or in Australasia. There simply were not centers or monasteries or anything. Now, 40 years later, there are numerous Buddhist communities all over the world, and the retreat centers in which we teach um, are basically running at capacity. So they, they are clearly addressing a need. But um, I don't see this in terms of a kind of Buddhism versus Christianity. I think that, I think it behoves both Buddhists and Christians to enter into a deeper level of dialogue, one with the other. Not one that is driven by doctrine and, and dogma, but one that, in which we recognize that we are both addressing a, a very, you know, the same basic human questions. And I think both traditions can learn a great deal from each other, um, I've learned an enormous amount from Christian theology in particular, which I think is way ahead of contemporary Buddhist thinking on many, many issues. And I wouldn't have been able to write the books I do had I not been informed by that, especially the liberal 
uh, yeah. tradition yeah. of, of, of uh, Christian thought. Lloyd, something that uh, Stephen just said there made me think that the, the fathers, the early fathers of this church, a hundred years ago, would have been quite surprised at this event tonight, that oh, a yeah. Christian Buddhist dialogue was taking place in their church. Oh yes, I, I, I <clears throat> after the, if it go back to when this church was founded, Presbyterians found it difficult to talk to Anglicans. <laughs> I mean, the, the, religiously, we're tremendously divided. It, and it, it wasn't until 50 years ago that, that Protestants began to talk to Catholics. So you couldn't expect them to talk to Buddhists, could you? I mean, they were well beyond the pale. And that shows you how far we have come in a hundred years. And, and that's very encouraging, really, it seems to me. And, and um, well, that's the comment on what you were saying. Yes. Buddhism has no essence. I think these are...